This is the base M4 Mac Mini, an outstanding value at $600. But say you wanted to upgrade from 256 gigabytes of storage to two terabytes. Folks, it's an $800 premium, taking it from $600 to $1,400. Ridiculous. But did you know you could do the upgrade yourself for less than half of what Apple charges? Yes, I did so, and you can too. It's super easy. And by doing so, you can save almost $500 and put that money towards something else, like more memory. Now, you may think this upgrade may not be for the faint of heart, but trust me, this upgrade is super easy. And now my base model Mac mini has two terabytes of storage. So I'm gonna walk you through each part of this process step by step. And trust me, at the end, you'll be confident that you can do it too. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. So before we start, I just wanna show you what disk utility looks like on my base M4 Mac mini. So we're gonna go ahead and load up disk utility. And this confirms that I have the 256 gigabyte base model M4 Mac mini, right? So the next thing I wanna do is to show you how this base model SSD performs. So I'm gonna perform a Blackmagic disk speed test just to give you a benchmark as to what the speed is like on this base model 256 gigabyte SSD. It's not terrible, but nothing to write home about, right? Now let's talk about what you need to upgrade. First and most obviously you need the base model M4 Mac mini. Note that this upgrade will not work with the Mac mini with M4 Pro chip. Next, you need a second Mac that's running macOS Sonoma or later for running a DFU restore to restore your Mac once the SSD is upgraded. Next, you'll need the SSD and shout out to Expand Mac Mini for sending this to me to test out. And they include a two terabyte SSD module. You can see it right here. They also include a driver handle, an opening pick, and the various Torx bits that you'll need, a T3, T5, and T8. But if you're doing this, I highly recommend the iFixit kit. It includes everything you need for this upgrade. I'll have that link down below in the description. The iFixit kit includes tweezers, which is handy for reaching screws, and a spudger, which is a handy prying tool that you may need. And iFixit also includes a jimmy, which is a super handy tool for getting this process started. And finally, you want a soft cloth surface to work on, to protect your Mac mini's enclosure. All right, let's get started. So the first thing you wanna do is back up your Mac mini and I'm just using this Samsung T9 SSD to do so. So I just connect it to my Mac mini and then I'm going to use Time Machine to perform a backup. So all you do, go to settings, under general, scroll down until you see Time Machine, select that, click add backup disk and then verify. And there is the SSD that I have connected, the T9, two terabytes available. Click set up disk. Make sure you have encrypt backup enabled and create an encryption password that you don't forget. They're actually gonna want you to add a hint so that you don't forget that encryption password. Click done. And now it's preparing the SSD for backup. So it's waiting to backup. If you wanna speed this up, you can easily go up to the menu bar and then start the backup. So you click here backup now and that will begin the backup so if I go back to time machine and settings you can see that backup running I'm speeding this up so you're not waiting this does take a little while but once that backup is completed you can verify its contents by opening up the finder and checking it out so here we go there's the t9 and there's our backup with all of our data so we're going to use that to restore once we install the new SSD now you wanna erase all content and settings from the current 256 SSD. So open up system settings, go to general, scroll down and select transfer or reset. Then click erase all content and settings and enter your max password to unlock. It's gonna ask you to perform a time machine backup, but you already did so, just, so just hit continue. Put in your Apple ID password to sign out of iCloud and thus disable activation lock. And once you're ready, click erase all content and settings. Now, obviously make sure you wanna do this before you do so, but I recommend doing so because you're gonna be taking this drive out of your Mac. So I think it's a good idea to delete that drive before doing so. So that's what we're doing here. Obviously you don't have to do this step if you don't want to, but I recommend it. 
and now that Mac is completely reset. The SSD has been erased and it's going to treat it like you're setting up this new Mac for the very first time again and wants to even activate. You can go ahead and let it do that if you want to. So that's what I've done now. And you can see the hello screen. So now it's ready to just set up, but we're not going to be setting that up. We're going to be removing this SSD. So installing the new SSD. First thing you want to do, put your Mac face down on a cloth, and then you're going to get your prying tool in your Jimmy. So take the Jimmy and put it right between the edge of the aluminum and the black plastic case. And just slide it in like that, right? So all you're doing is making a little opening to put your prying tool in. And then you can just remove the Jimmy like that. So the prying tool is not going to mar anything, but you do want to be careful not to insert this more than an inch, especially near the power button, because there's a power cable that connects to that power button. So you don't want to sever that cable in other words, but you'll hear some popping sounds. Don't be alarmed by those. Those are just the clips that are popping out. There we go. Should hear one here. There you go. I'll just keep going around the perimeter. There you go. So now it's popped out of place and we're ready to remove this, but be careful because there's a power cable connected to the power button. So you have to lift it out like this so that the power cable stays in place. You don't, don't rip that out of there. There's no need to remove that power cable. Just use something to prop it up like this. So there's not any strain placed on the cable. In fact, you're not going to disconnect any cables during this install. So the first thing we're going to remove are the eight screws that secure the inner plate using a T5 Torx bit. And all these screws are exactly the same, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. So I place the T5 Torx bit inside the iFixit screwdriver, and we're just going to go through here and remove all eight of these screws that secure the inner plate. This is super easy. So make sure you don't lose any of the screws, but they look like that. And all of them are the same, like I said, so you don't have to worry about keeping them in the right place or separating them because they're all the same for this inner plate. Folks, if you appreciate easy to follow tutorials like this, be sure to thumbs up. That helps other people know that this video is legit. All right, so we're making some progress here. Now for this side, you kind of just want to move the back cover out of the way without disturbing the cable too much. There's one more little screw hidden there. So that's all eight screws removed. Now you want to grab the inner plate like this and slide it down underneath that heat sink like this. And then you want to just basically put the back cover back on top, but be gentle because there is a ribbon cable connected to that inner plate, as you can see there. But if you prop it up like this and maybe put something against that back cover to prevent that cable from having any stress put on it, it'll be fine. Now take your T3 Torx bit with your screwdriver and remove these four screws here. So the one there, and these two at the top are a certain size, so make sure you separate those from the two on the bottom. They're pretty easy to determine the difference though. These two on the bottom are much longer, but use the same T3 Torx bit. So you can just grab that out like that if it doesn't come out. And this other one I had to actually use my little tweezers to grab it because it's kind of in an awkward spot. So that's where those tweezers can come in handy. So those two screws are a little bit longer. All right, so now we can remove the fan. And again, the fan is attached with a ribbon cable. So just be gentle. And you just want to prop it up and look what you see there, the SSD below. So just prop up that fan. You can just put it like that. And now we have access to that SSD. That is Awesome, right? So now we want to use our T8 Torx bit. I'll just move this fan over a little bit. Grab your T8 Torx bit and then unscrew the securing screw there. There we go. And set that screw aside. And now you just want to dislodge the SSD and just take a little, maybe rocking back and forth a little bit to get it out of its socket. It's not difficult at all. There's plenty of space and there you go. There is the 256 gigabyte SSD that just isn't a lot of space. You can compare the two, the 256 on the left, the two terabyte on the right. So now let's get that two terabyte SSD installed. You want the short part of the key 
at the top as you're installing it. So just keep that in mind. Sorry, my big head blocking the view, but you can see here in just a second, move your big head, man. All right, there you go. So um, now we're just going to slide that back into the socket. There you go. Just push it all the way in. Make sure it clears the screw hole. And now you just use that, that screw and the T8 Torx bit to screw that back in. Make sure you don't over tighten it. You want it tight, but not don't over tighten it for risk of damaging the SSD. All right, so now it's just a matter of putting everything back together. That's it, folks. That literally is the whole installation process for the hardware, that is. Still has some software stuff we need to do, but now we're just gonna put it back together. So now just secure the fan using the T3 Torx driver, two screws, the longer screws there on the bottom, and then you have the shorter T3 screws there at the top. I mean, wasn't that easy? We didn't have to disconnect any cables, anything really weird. Anyone can do this. Now, although we're putting the fan back in, we're not going to reconnect the inner plate and the back cover just yet because we want to confirm that this thing actually works, right? And I think it's a good idea to do that before you start screwing everything back in. I'm 99.9% .9 sure this is going to work fine, but it just makes more sense from a time perspective to make sure it works before screwing everything back into place. All right, so now we have it installed. What we're going to do is perform a DFU restore. And to do so, you want to use the DFU port on the back of your Mac Mini. That is the middle port on the back of the Mac Mini. The middle Thunderbolt port is the designated DFU port, and you just want to use a USB-C cable. You can use just a regular USB-C charging cable that comes with your MacBook Pro, for instance, but you don't want to use a Thunderbolt cable. That's what Apple says. I've actually used Thunderbolt cable before and it worked fine, but that's what Apple says. Then you want to connect that USB-C cable to the Mac that's going to revive your M4 Mac Mini, hold down the power button, and then plug in the power cable. That will enter DFU restore mode on this Mac Mini. And I'm going to show you how that all works here. It's not difficult. It's not complex. It's super straightforward. All right. Then you're going to see this little light shine orange and it'll flash orange. I'll show you. All right. So here's our USB-C cable plugged into the DFU port. It's already plugged into the Mac that's going to be used to revive this machine. Then you want to hold down the power button and then plug in the power cord like that. And then almost immediately on the Mac that you're using to restore your M4 Mac mini, you're going to see this on your finder, Mac DFU mode, right? So it recognizes immediately. And you can see here, the little flashing orange indicates that there's an issue. You need to restore this Mac. You don't want to choose revive. We want to do a restore. So click restore Mac and it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to do this? Yes. We want to restore and update. It's going to download the necessary restore file from Apple servers. So depending on your internet connection, this could take a while and it's going to take a while anyway, as it prepares your Mac for restore and then performs the actual restore. So it's sort of like restoring an iPhone, for instance, via DFU mode on a Mac. It's very similar. So preparing Mac, restoring Mac software. I've obviously sped this up. It's verifying the restore. So you can see that light on the Mac mini is now back to, to white and it's ready to go. So the connected Mac has been restored. Just click OK. And there we go, folks. This Mac has been restored with the new two terabyte SSD. So now you know what time it is. Time to migrate your time machine backup data back to this Mac with that new extra large SSD inside. So you just want to connect that Mac to a monitor. And we're just going to go through the setup process like we normally would. All right. So I have my mouse and my keyboard connected English language. I'm just going to go through the initial setup, obviously United States here. Then on this screen, it asks you about transferring your data to this Mac. Now, before you select continue, you want to connect the SSD that we used initially to back up using time machine. So there's our SSD plugged in. And now on this screen, make sure you have the option checked from a Mac time machine or startup disk, then click continue, not now on accessibility. And then on data and privacy, continue. Now transfer information, select your SSD, in my case, the T9, click continue. Put in the password that you use to secure the time machine backup, click unlock. 
select the time machine, click continue, then choose your backup, click continue, and it will prepare the source. And then on this next screen, it's going to talk about transferring your information. So it's going to calculate the size of all the things it's going to be transferring over. And what's cool is it'll actually show you how much it's selected to transfer and 1.8 terabytes available on Mac. So it recognizes that two terabyte SSD. Now you want to put in a password for the user and then click continue. Now it's transferring all your information from that time machine backup over to your Mac mini with that new two terabyte SSD. So everything looks like it did and works like it did before. Now you just got a larger drive with lots more storage, right? Now you want to just click restart now and it's rebooting and it's still transferring your information to complete that migration and click done. And there we go, folks. There is the hello screen. So now it's just a matter of logging back in, signing back into iCloud and verifying that everything's good. So let's go ahead and do that now. So agree to terms and conditions. Welcome to Mac. Put in your password. Now it's going to sign in and there you go. File vault. You can go through touch ID setup, all that, you know how to do all that, right? We're just doing that real quick. Apple pay, skip that. So welcome to Mac. And in a second, we'll just click continue. And there we go. So now let's view disk utility. Let's just see if Mac OS recognizes, let's change that wallpaper first. Cause I'm not feeling that. All right. So we're going to go over to Launchpad, other disk utility. And bam, folks, there we go. What we see there, two terabytes. Beautiful. Lots of storage. So much better than 256. Now let's perform a performance test just to see how it does. How's it stack up to the original SSD? And because this SSD is larger, it should be faster. And we confirm that it is significantly faster on write speeds, roughly ballpark with the read speeds. But that's a good deal. Not only you get a larger drive, but a faster drive. You gotta love it. So now that we verify that everything works great, we want to resecure the inner plate and the bottom cover. So that's super easy, as you might imagine. Pretty much just the reverse of what we did initially. So you just want to make sure that the inner plate is in line with all the screw holes, and then use all the T5 torque screws, all eight of them, to secure the inner plate back into place. Super simple. And then it's just a matter of resecuring the back cover using the built in clips. You see those four clips where they align. And you'll hear them when they snap into place. And folks, our mission is complete. So, ladies and gentlemen, what did we learn? We learned that under no circumstance should you consider paying $800 for a two terabyte upgrade to the base model Mac mini. No, instead, you want to upgrade it yourself and save yourself nearly $500 in the process. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to let me know. And if you appreciated this video, again, leave a thumbs up and check the links down below in the description, including my full written tutorial on 9 to 5 Mac. Thanks again for watching. This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac.